Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show time. I'm Sorgatron at Sorgatron on the Twitters, uh, coming to you live from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk professional wrestling in an amateur manner. Let's say, take a look at who's on the panel tonight. We got Papa Lunchbox from somewhere in the area at DJ Lunchbox on the Twitter, sir. What's up, guys? It is Papa Lunchbox. I have been digging holes in the backyard. My hands are covered in blood. My hands are covered in blood uh, from uh, just clawing at the earth, rending at it, uh, because uh, those goddamn mole men have crossed me for the absolute last time. I'm going to strike back. Please join me in my quest. Go ahead over to panelriot.com. Send us an email, panelriot at gmail.com, and tell me what you will do against the mole men's tyranny. I'm going to eat it at almond sort. Uh, also with us uh, from Poughkeepsie, New York, is Mad Mike. I, I I don't even know how to follow that except fuck moles. Hmm. Fuck. That's not a solution. It's more of an emphatic statement. Yes, of course. Stopgap measure. I love that Sorg is 100% unfazed by this shit now. Nothing surprised me, sir. Nothing surprised <laughs> me. When you've seen what I've seen in this world... <laughs> <laughs> and on podcasting, nothing nothing surprised me. You heard the story from The Gathering, right? Um, also with us, a special guest returning to the show of uh, the very successful Wrestling With Subtitles campaign. He's got something else we're going to talk about here shortly. Max Zalewski. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? That's where you get exciting. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, guys. Awesome, awesome. And we're going to have a lot of fun here tonight talking wrestling, getting ready for SummerSlam this week. Um, we got some voicemails. We got some other stuff to talk about. And of course, uh, you can uh, uh, drop us a line. Uh, we're uh, all of this stuff's over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including our other shows, including the wrap ups, the after shows, and the Indie Mayhem Show. And you can find all that stuff on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, video and audio formats. Please subscribe, like, comment on any of those wherever you find this show. And you can drop a line to Good Times. Good Times. <laughs> Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. We got one of those hotline uh, voicemails there today. Uh, thanks intro by Basic Sickness. Check out some of his free music over at BasicSickness.com, another uh, Pittsburgh original. Uh, you can also uh, find us. We're on Facebook, on uh, uh, Google+, and um, at Mayhem Show on the Twitters. And also, please check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, where a lot of great conversations happening amongst the, amongst the crew, amongst the co-hosts, amongst the fans, just having a good time uh, and making new friends. And, uh, of course, we're here every Tuesday night around 9 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com, part of the an entire night starting at about 4 o'clock of all kinds of fun and geekery uh, amongst six shows. You, you, you Tuesday night, just tune in. Just tune in and see what's going on uh, with us. And, of course, uh, thanks for our Patreons that have been supporting us for a while now. Of course, the WrestlingRevolution.com and Bo Diggity. Woo! Uh, you can join us as well and help support the show and help it get bigger at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show so max i want to touch base with you first of all a follow-up for those that maybe haven't haven't uh checked into it since we've had you on uh from what i understand wrestling with subtitles was a uh resounding success right can, can you tell us uh, uh what all happened in the in the after shock of that 
Yeah, um, I was doing some, uh, you know, quote unquote podcast tours and uh, the Wrestling Mayhem show was was definitely the highlight of them. If you remember, I won uh, interview of the year, I believe. I believe so. Last yeah, year. Well, correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, since, since then, we uh, oh, me, actually uh, in May of 2013, uh, May of 2013, WWE decided that they were going to do subtitles on DVDs. Uh, TNA said that they were going to do subtitles on DVDs, but they haven't released the DVD because they might, they got no money. Uh, and uh, so basically now I'm just kind of t- live tweeting Raw, SummerSlam, uh, any pay-per-view, specifically SummerSlam apparently. Uh, and uh, uh, so live tweeting is something that I'm really big into. And uh, we'll uh, uh, I've got this new thing. I'm going to try and get UFC with subtitles going. Uh Nice. The DVDs nice. for UFC does, don't have subtitles on them either. So uh, that's going to be – I literally just started it last night. Uh, only 20 petition signers. So get on it. Awesome. And, of course, you got to do – Where's the petition? Okay. Where is it? Uh, it's uh, change.org. Look for wrestling with subtitles and it will pop up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That works. That works. And of course, you got a new venture, or is this an old venture from what we we're talking about with the dot com uh, with this wrestling game? Uh, I've been working for the wrestling game for about four years. It's the only uh, game of its kind online. Uh, I mean, there's like Total Extreme Wrestling uh, that's like an application that you can download, and that game is awesome. Uh, but ours is a, is an MMO text based wrestling game, the wrestling game.com. Uh, 250,000 concurrent players uh, across the world. Uh, you know, we've got federations, e-feds, all of that. Come and create your character uh, at any time. Uh, TheWrestlingGame.com. Come see me, Server3, or uh, Facebook.com backslash the wrestling game. I control that area, too. Awesome. So. Awesome. So this sounds like it's it's one of those things that's like that that fantasy manager kind of game. Like when we talked to uh, to uh, oh geez, where was what was that wrestling game that we talked to a while ago? <laughs> wrestling manager. Wrestling manager. Like it, it's kind of like one of those kinds of games. Uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, you can create your own character and have your own finishers and have your own move sets. You can create your own class. You know, if you want to be a big fat guy, you can be a big fat guy. If you want to be a small teeny guy, you can be a small teeny guy. Uh, and you can. Uh, you can play to however you want to play. You know, you can spend hours on it or you can spend, you know, come on and spend 10 minutes, uh, you know, do your matches and then, you know, head out for the day. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, so uh, that's uh, thewrestlinggame.com if you want to check it out. I can imagine uh, uh, some of the guys uh, in our crew uh, jumping on there and having a lot of fun with that. So awesome. Awesome. And of course, uh, Twitter at rest. Oh, hold on. I want to make sure I get it right. Wrestling subtitle. Wrestle subtitle. Sorry. Wrestle subtitle. There we go. <laughs> Isn't that, that funky? Like, okay, what did we omit in order for Twitter to digest this? You know? Right. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we do have some fan interaction from this week. Our friend in the mainstream media. By the way, look look for some things from him uh, over on KDKA's website. It sounds like there might be some cool wrestling stuff uh, coming up uh, with some of the guys coming to town in the coming weeks uh, that we may touch on later. Uh, but he did send a voicemail, so let's go see what he had to say. Hey, Mayhemers, it's your pal in the mainstream media. I'm driving into work, so I figured I'd drop you a little voicemail. Do it both, diggity style. <laughs> Woo! Um, I just wanted to comment on one thing real quick. LB will love this. <gasps> Goddamn John Cena promo last night. Uh? <sighs> Talking about people want to watch him turn. Don't say stupid shit like that. You know, Justin Labar just wrote a very well thought out column about this kind of stupid stuff. This is like, isn't this the reason that we all, that, that people hate Vince Russo because of this, 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 this shooty crap and trying to get the, and then our, our thing, Portland Raw crowd, when the, when the guy that you think sucks starts talking about fans saying that he sucks, you don't chant he sucks at him. You don't chant Cena sucks at him when he asks you to chant Cena sucks at him. You're just doing what he's telling you to do, you bunch of goddamn marks. I guess I'm getting worked too. I don't know. I'm all worked up. I'll be sitting on the Team Brock side of the room for SummerSlam. I want to see a massacre. And I'll be, I don't care. 
what you think about that. You and your little cuddle buddy on the other side of the room can sit by yourself while Brock whoops that ass. So that's that. Good night. Have a nice show. LB, I think that was mostly directed at you. I've got a little response here. First off, he's not my cuddle buddy, okay? His name is Riz. All right, let's get that straight right away. <laughs> Second off, um, the, uh, we we go here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We go to our friend the Carlin's house, watch the pay per views with them. It has I've been informed that they are segregating, they are splitting the room in twain. One half is the pro Brock side, and the other half is the pro Cena side. And you know what I'm going to do? Stretch out my fucking legs, turn my John Cena cap straight forward, flat brim and all. Adjust my brand new Kmart John Cena t shirt, <laughs> turn to the left side of the room and say, What's that, guys? I can't hear you over you not being able to see me. <laughs> Adjust my double championship scarf and watch John Cena whoop Brock Lesnar's ass all the way to back to diverticulitis. City? I don't know. I got nothing there. <laughs> he's going to beat him so hard, he's going to give him diverticulitis a second time. He's going to think he was in his first UFC match with Shane Carwin. Okay? Brock Lesnar's going to get his ass kicked so bad that he's going to think he's fucking Sable for the first time when she shoved a couple of thumbs up, you know, back where Paul Heyman lives. Wow. Rise above hate. Matt Carlin's rise above hate. Hate. I got to pick a side of the room. Got to pick a side of the room. So well, I don't want to pick a side you, of the room. There's going to be plenty of room next to me. Oh, then, so, then that's easy. So the, the Carlins have become King Solomon. Apparently split the baby in half. And you know who loves the baby more and don't want you to split it in half. This guy. I was going to say John Cena. I'm not going to leave anybody covered in blood and vomit and feces. <laughs> <laughs> unless things get a little crazy with Riz on the way home. Um, uh, Max, do you have any commentary on that? <laughs> uh, personally, S- Cena needs to lose at SummerSlam. Uh, he just needs to drop what? the belt. <laughs> what is even happening? Well, this will be the last time Max is on the Wrestling Man show. It's, it's a good thing. Box. It's a good thing LB doesn't do the booking. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. It wouldn't make sense for Lesnar to lose after coming off of the win against Undertaker. Therefore, Cena is the, greater than The Undertaker? That's ah, not, that's what if The correct. Undertaker costs Brock the match? Leading to what? A Survivor Series match? Get the fuck out of here. WrestleMania <laughs> rematch. No. I don't want to see that match part two. Nobody wants to see that again. I know. I mean, <laughs> we, were, match. we were barely watching it the first time. I'm playing <laughs> devil's advocate. I don't think you know they 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 are known to do the long tail setups for WrestleMania in the recent years. So why not set up WrestleMania and SummerSlam? I do not. I want to make clear. I do not expect Undertaker to be showing up. Um, I would be very shocked. Um, Sting Brock? No, that wouldn't be a thing. No, no. Sting is not gonna fucking wrestle in WWE. Yes, he Let's will. see this He'll alone have one now. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's no, kinda, he's not. He's gonna be against Triple H. At WrestleMania 31 is going to have Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, Sting versus Undertaker, and Kurt Angle versus Daniel Bryan. I'm calling. You know what? All you said Sting. Right you now. you called Sting versus the Undertaker last year for WrestleMania. You yes. said that they wouldn't have two Money in the Bank matches at this week. This year's Money in the Bank pay per view. And they did. Your track record is they it did great. They didn't have two Money in the Aw, Bank. Aw, shut the fuck up all day long. <laughs> I swear to God. Yes, they did. <laughs> They had one letter. Shut the fuck up all day long. Wow. I. Wow. Okay. Um, Rise above hate, up. LB. This is my fault. Matt Carlin has got me all fired up now. Rise above hate. Rise above your. Rise above hat. <laughs> Okay, on that note, I, I don't know where to go from there. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks, Matt Carnes. You guys, again, uh, drop us a voicemail at 412-206-WMS0. Uh, and you, too, can personally rile up LB. <laughs> um, I, I, okay. Um, so I, I wanted to point out a couple things from the Facebook. Uh, one, I believe Eamon posted this one. 
uh, those of us who have been watching NXT have been uh, pretty big fans of Tyler Breeze. Uh, there is an auction going on over there uh, where they're selling. Uh, he has worn and signed entrance and gear, including, I know, uh, Eamon really wants that cell phone case is part of the package. <laughs> That's awesome. It's the most blinged out fuzzy cell phone case I've ever seen. It's awesome. Um, also, you clearly don't watch enough E Network if that's the most blinged out fuzzy one. You've ever e seen. Network? No, I definitely don't watch any E Network. Um, but Total Divas. Well, that's I watched the reruns on the network actually. <laughs> so uh, with my wife, it's been a it's been a very I bonding know, bonding experience and, there. And if you, great listener, are watching the reruns of Total Divas on the network, be sure to go to WrestlingMayhemDo.com where I did an article about every episode we of the should, first season. You know, of we should Divas. certainly. You know, that's that's something we dropped the ball on. We should certainly be re retweeting your old reviews yeah. as the as the episodes re release on the network. Um, you can you can hear my you can read about my progressive dislike for for Eva Marie from really don't like her to oh my god I really don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> the the you know you, you, and you did uh, you did all the way through season two right? No, uh, by the time we did season two, I started live tweeting. He's live tweeting, okay. And I was okay. getting Summer Ray to talk. Oh, to me. oh, I remember because this was always the very, very awkward uh, photos of Eva Marie for every album cover. Yes, and it got us a lot of website hits. It so did get us a lot of website <laughs> hits. Yeah, that's good. Good finds on those, especially those Maxim ones. By the way, shout out to Eva Marie's Instagram. Thank you. <laughs> She's a very good source of that kind of stuff. Um, the other big news from this week. Uh, so the the internet. Uh, wet its pants uh, with a picture that was on uh, WWE's website of uh, Kevin Steen shaking hands with Triple H in the with an NXT shirt on. It's finally happening, and, and they revealed in the article who 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 lined this up. William Regal. That's not surprising. No, no that's not that surprising. Yeah, yeah. So I, actually, I think I feel like um uh uh. Uh, Sammy Zayn, I almost call him El Generico. Uh, I feel like uh, Regal had a hand in him too, probably. Which makes sense since they're both like Canadian buddies, you know. Wouldn't it be great if he made his debut costing Sammy Zayn the NXT title? That'd be oh. nice. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like at like at the next um, live NXT show or whenever it is, like September 11th or whenever it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Have have uh, Sammy versus Neville and have Kevin Steen cause a run in and boom off to the races and then Sami Zayn turns heel and be like never forget ole, ole, I, you, you gotta think on 9 I would hope these guys that they're making a big deal about signing to NXT or not going through the long process like I don't think these are guys they need to develop at, at, at this high profile level um, you know, maybe they're, I mean, they're, 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 they're not, they're not bringing them in, you know, especially with the, the fanfare they are on the website. I don't think they're bringing them in to be retrained so much, maybe readapted, but I don't think they would do this if they didn't think that they're going to be turned around pretty quick. Well, if you listen to like podcasts of like guys like Daniel Bryan and, uh, AJ and stuff like that, they, there's a specific WWE style match that that a lot of guys who come from the indies do not know how to do. Yeah. Like, and I think that's what the main hiccup is. Cause I think that's why like Cassius Ono really didn't work mm -hmm. just because he couldn't adapt to the WWE style match. Like even Jericho talked about it when he first came in, like he, he had to work a different kind of match from anything that he, that he had done before. Mm -hmm. And it was a big transition for him. So, yeah, because I mean they're they're really big on their version of storytelling, their version of, of making thing making sure certain things hit on TV. Um, I think there's a certain speed they make sure they go at. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know what what you hear about when uh, it, you know if you listen to Jr's podcast when he's talking about the ROH guys and they they move too fast, they need to slow down, you know, a tick. You know, um, I, everybody definitely needs to adapt when they get into the WWE side of things. Um, and but again, I still think I still think that's not going to be much of a turnaround for for guys like this. And that was a Kenta that that they got from Japan, right? So you're saying that they're not going to keep them in NXT for as long as no, say, no. I'm like, saying uh, they're not. Else. I'm I'm saying they're going to debut on NXT pretty quick. Oh, yeah, I can see that. 
I feel like didn't I, Z- Zane Zane was fairly quick, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, I think so. Like, like uh, within six months, you're going to see Kevin Steen. You're going to see Kenta. Well, when Sammy debuted, they were still on Hulu. They that's, weren't that's on the true. network. So that's true. Do you think them being on the network really changes um, who they bring up now? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, absolutely. Especially with the worldwide stuff, I would expect seeing Kenta within the next couple of uh, uh, TV tapings. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, I don't. I I think Kenta is going to take longer a debut than Kevin Steen because of the foreign influence. Uh, foreign influence, maybe a language barrier, and again the style of match because steen kind of already works wwe style mm-hmm. like the matches i've seen of him he he wrestles very similar to like a wwe tv atmosphere because he's not you know the super high flying flippy guy like like sammy Zayn or you know stuff like that like he's a more mat based guy so i would imagine it's probably be easier for him to transition now, I, I do think, and, and in the meantime, if he's not coming through, they do have, I think, enough international appeal. They do have uh, Callisto, for instance. Hopefully, they, they do something with him. Um, I'm, I'm actually going through here trying to pop anybody else. Well, he's in the tag team tournament with Sin Cara. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Sin Cara for you know, whatever weight you have for that, right? They have a cowboy, apparently. Um, again, just flipping through. They have through. two cowboys. They have sort. two cowboys? Who's the other cowboy? Now, I got Wesley Blake. Who's the other cowboy? Um... Buddy something, I think. It, 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 he teams with Wesley oh, Blake. He's... Buddy Landell. No, 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 I don't think that's, that's that guy. Buddy. He's that guy in our chat. I mean, that's a big not, hit for us. Not, not Buddy Landell. Not oh. Buddy Landell. I forget. I Cal forget Bishop? Name, but maybe that's it, yeah. I think so. I'm going to do I guess other than that, yeah, they don't have a lot of diversity going on there. I mean, well, Adrian, Adrian Neville's got to be uh, you know, with the British influence. As but he champion. has no character. He's just the flippy guy. <laughs> that is true. Yep. That is true, unfortunately. And that's, and that's going to be true for guys like Callisto. Yeah, he's a luchador, but that's all he does. That that mm-hmm. That is literally the only thing that he'll do, is that he will be the replacement Sankara, the replacement Rey Mysterio. Mm-hmm. You know, they've got, they've got to put those chess pieces in action sooner rather than later. But he'll be great in the next Scooby-Doo movie, right? <laughs> I, uh, I would like to point out that um, WWE fired their o- only Asian employee and then hired an Asian employee. <laughs> wait, wait, who'd they fire? That was Asian? They, they fired um, Yoshitatsu and like oh. two weeks later brought in Kenta. So, you know. Oh, it's that, uh, it's that, that, that affirmative action percentage they got to keep, I guess. Can't- it's possible. I'm just saying I'll be very surprised. If I actually see Kenta on television, mm-hmm. what'd you say, Max? No, knowing WWE, Kenta's gonna, you know, uh, debut with a name like you know Toyota Yamaha and have his face half painted, and he's gonna come out to like this this you know Taiko drum music, and he's just gonna flop because he doesn't because the guys don't know how to work with him. I'm hoping I'm hoping the fact that they're saying hey we signed such and such means hey we're not gonna change the name. Uh, uh, no, they because they did that with uh, Sin Cara. Did they? Yeah, they said, "Hey, we signed Mystico." <laughs> they did that with Del Rio too, didn't they? Yep, we signed Dos Caras. Alberto Del Rio. Okay, never mind. It's all out the oh, window. Yeah. That worked out real well. For yeah. Him. Oh yeah. 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 Del Rio ruins everything. Hashtag. <laughs> oh, let's 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 get into that in a moment. But first, I want to give a shout out to a local sponsor we got here, Slice on Broadway. Uh, they're up the road if you're in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, right along the tracks in Beachview, the only place uh, where it regularly runs. So, uh, the, our, our train subway system runs down the road three blocks from me. Um, and you'll find a wonderful pizza place and follow the smells in the door. And it is the best place. It's New York approved, as Mad Mike uh, uh, relates. Slice on Broadway. 
some damn fine pizza. And of course, if you're uh, heading into town uh, from the airport to the airport, just uh, heading out Fort Pitt, you're going to see an expert Carnegie PA. If you hit Main Street down there, you're going to mm-hmm. see uh, another slice on Broadway just opened a couple of weeks ago. Um, so go check that out. Uh, uh, they're great people. They uh, uh, and uh, the great pizza. So go uh, go check them out. Uh, they check out their Facebook. Um, and uh, and uh, tell them the Wrestling Mayhem show sent you. So or even him on Twitter. Even if you're not around, just say you heard of it. You're jealous. We actually sent a slice up to uh, uh, Wheels from the show at the RWA show this past weekend. Not terribly warm because it was about an hour away, uh, but still he was digging on it. And uh, maybe we'll have him on talking about here in the future. We're spreading it. We're spreading the slice. So thanks to them. Max said you're going to crap on uh, Del Rio on Twitter earlier. Uh, oh of course, God. he was released this past week. Now, now what is the story? What, it, something happened. <laughs> it's not just they let them let him go, right? Apparently, he slapped the shit out of an like an intern or a, a social media uh, guy. However, what I feel is that that Del Rio was telling this guy about his new finish, where he just goes after the other arm, and the guy died from boredom. <laughs> <laughs> Harsh oh, words. Wow. Okay. Harsh okay. words. Um, well, I I mean, I heard that the guy that the social media guy said something racist. So Del Rio popped him, which oh. um, you can't really blame Del Rio for his actions, but still not very professional. Mm-hmm. And and plus, WWE is probably just looking for a way to get rid of him. That's a lot of money to cut, too, yep. just, to, just to be like, you know what? Fuck it, you're gone. Vince yeah, was I mean, thrilled. He did what? Oh, man, we're going to save so much money. And you can you know, Go you ahead. know what they did with the money that um, they saved by firing Del Rio? Get they a dishwasher? They the got a man-sized box for Dean Ambrose to pop out. <laughs> nice. Mike, wow. Mike, you used to work at WWE. Did you ever hit anybody or get hit by anyone while you were there? Um, actually, yeah. Uh, we, we, would, we would have chop, chop fests in the parking lot. That, that's, not, that's, not, that's no bullshit. Um, and also on the last day, we had a fake ladder match because we had, we had a um, a WWE Loggers Championship, which was really a kids uh, WWE title. We all signed it, and on the last day, uh, two uh, two of the guys, me what me being one of them, had a ladder match for the Loggers Championship, and I may have won by cheating. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Exactly. exactly. There you go. Exactly. There you go. I had some outside interference. It was uh, it was a clean fight. It was a clean fight, but it wasn't because it was a ladder match, so it was okay. But yeah, I'm the Loggers champion. So just just to help champion. people's vision of the situation, it's not like this happened right outside of the Stanford offices. You guys were actually like down the road, right? Uh, yeah, we were a couple blocks away, but it happened inside our um, our little office area. <laughs> nice. Like, like they had uh, the ceiling was the little panel things where you can just push up, so we pushed one of them up and hang and hung the title from in there, and that's how we had our ladder match. <laughs> but um, none. Uh, more to the point, none of us got fired because of any of this, because you know we did, we didn't make as much as El Perro with El Rio. Yeah, there's that. Uh, but we, I mean, we like, like uh, somebody mentioned the idea that you know they're really kind of looking for reasons to get rid of people because of this whole cleansing that needs to happen, uh, where they're stripping down, you know, what they're what they're, you know, basically their expenses for the year, right? Um, to to appease the uh, the stock market, I guess. Uh, look what happened with Emma, where they kind of got kind of ahead of themselves, I think, admittedly, uh, over the the shoplifting incident versus other people like you know jack swagger that before got got caught with what a dui and and smoking weed right mm-hmm. so i mean there there's definitely a little bit of jump in the gun here um there was i know there was talk about how exana when I, I was I, I came across an article from when exana was released and they talked about how rosa mendez like the only thing that saved her was that e network wanted her for uh total divas so and again and gee, i wonder why e wanted Rosa Mendez to be on Total Divas, where you know 
you need a little bit more diversity. A little bit. Yeah. Little God forbid bit. you have diversity on television. <laughs> Those international markets, right? Uh, so I, and that is kind of sad. It's like, okay, I mean, that's the only. That's probably the only reason Eva Marie is around. To be honest, the only reason right? Eva Marie is around is because Total Divas. Yeah. Period. Right. You saw the match yeah. on NXT last week. Oh my god! Total Divas. Right. Jesus Christ! Like I like her heel entrance, but God, as soon as she got off that pedestal, everything was just downhill. Did Did you guys see last night? <laughs> yes. Uh, she. She had the match with AJ. She she won. She rolled out of the ring. She was celebrating. And then two minutes later, she was selling an injury that didn't happen. So she was celebrating? Aww. Aww. Well, folks, that's it for this week's uh, episode of the Wrestling <laughs> Mayhem. Um, check us out at SilverTrendMedia.com. Like... <laughs> Show's canceled. Uh... 400 some episodes. We're done. <laughs> wow. wow. And um, even a redhead brought us in, a redhead brings us out. Mm. <laughs> By the way, uh, I also want to point out from the Facebook group, uh, we had Chad the Chat on here. Uh, was that last week or the week before? A week before, right? And you mentioned the Chess Flexor pizza from, oh, what was that? 2007, 2008, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he still has it. There it is. And it still kind of looks like pizza. Yes. Um, so for those long time like listeners of the show, what's that? I wouldn't lick it. Though. Don't lick it. Do not lick it. No. Uh, that's probably, you could probably hurt somebody with that. Um, also from last night, it was Hulk Hogan's birthday. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yawn. 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 You what was the point? You didn't, you didn't love the montage? No. No. Do you know how many Hulk Hogan montages I've seen in my life, Sork? Well, That's because you used to work for the company, Mike. No, even I'm not even counting all the time. that. I'm not even counting that. Do you know how many Hulk Hogan montages they've shown in WWE programming? It's well, a lot. Not enough. Because that last one, that was good shit. That was good uh, stuff. I, I, you know, anytime that they're gonna hell, they had a montage for Hulk Hogan on uh on on Countdown that I had on today, and I was like, no, I'm in on this. I'm in. I'm in. Um, but. I understand I turn into an eight-year-old every time I hear that music and see the yeah. red and yellow. So, I mean, that's kind of where see, I'm at with it. Yeah, I do that when I see Randy Savage. Mm -hmm. I, I Missy gets that way whenever she sees Sting. Yeah, I um, I saw uh, the Hulk Hogan versus McMahon match at WrestleMania 19 live. I was 11 or 12, and just seeing Hulk Hogan in the – in, in, in the awe that is WrestleMania, you know, the 50,000 people, you know, chanting for Hogan and, and everything, the red and yellow. It was insane. And I I saw Hogan uh, last night on Raw, and I I, felt, I transformed into that 12-year-old kid. I didn't give a fuck about backstage politics. I, I didn't care about, uh, you know, how he dragged TNA down into the dumps. It's Hulk Hogan, and mm -hmm. you're going to cheer just like, you know, uh, uh, just like Mike was going to cheer, uh, you know, uh, Savage and everything. So, you know, that's interesting. So, so you're you're you you're used to a later Hogan, right? I yeah, I um, I was not a WCW fan uh, growing mm -hmm. up. I started watching in 90, uh, 98, 99. So at the in the very middle of the yeah, Attitude yeah. Era before the Ruthless Aggression Era. Okay. Because th this is a thought that I I always I thought about last night as we're going through things and and they did the NWO and I had that thought about like uh you know you know some I, I guess your age uh only like your Hogan was maybe that NWO Hogan and I, I wondered if Hulk Hogan is as effectual effective uh to to uh, effectual effectual did Not I just invent that is that what's happening Not um, no uh, to the younger yeah. generation than mine, where I I grew up, like my era was when Hogan had the belt for like three or four years, and I felt like he was the only one ever to have that belt, right? And I was in the height of Hulkamania at that point. Um, so it's interesting to see that that does still kind of reach uh, even now for to, to new audiences. 
yeah, um, especially with like the history of, of of WrestleMania and all the shows that have come out that shows that Hogan, you know, what what Hogan Hogan and McMahon really built in the '80s mm-hmm. uh, with with the WWE Enterprise, uh, you know, they 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 set they set it up and they were like, "This is what we're gonna do," and and they went and got and they went and did it. So awesome! That's awesome! That's awesome to hear. Uh, cool. Um, great. Uh, so, uh, anything else about the, well, you know, I, in the end, we had a reason for Brock Lesnar to come out. We had a reason that John Cena to come out and have some kind of interaction. Right. But, uh, I don't know. If and Brock didn't, if Brock didn't attack anyone at that. No, no, but still it was, a, it was a cool moment to have Hogan kind of face to face with them, especially, I mean, there's history there. I mean, uh, Brock was kind of the one that put Hogan out in that era. Well, yeah, that's why. That's why there's like, and they use that to put over a big title SummerSlam match. Good job. Good why job. Why not do it again? And 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 on top of that, you got your nostalgia. We know WWE's big on it. it holy crap, Paul Orndorff and that mustache and that robe was crazy. Um, not just that, the song, the Mister Wonderful <laughs> song. Help Sorg. me out. Is that his WCW song? Yes. No clue. That's, Had no that's idea. When Paul Orndorff. Forgot that he was Mr. Wonderful and like went to a fortune teller to try and remember who he was. And the fortune teller told him he was wonderful. And then he came out. Oh, oh, everything about that. You need to find me these YouTube clips. I need to see this stuff. Uh, It sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. (laughs) Um, Jeez, you're going to make me dive into like bad 90s WCW. Oh, hell yeah, I am. Uh, Give me a list. (laughs) Give me a list. Anything before 1996, because I know all of the post-1996 bad WCW moments. <laughs> uh, boy. Um, all right. On that note, hey, we're going to go to a break. We're going to come back with Remember When. We're going to continue this Hulk Hogan conversation just a little bit. The good old days. We actually just had a, a Remember When with Max, actually. Um, but uh, in the meantime, here's a little clip. Uh, there's a great double shot craziness with our friends at the Renegade Wrestling Alliance this past weekend. Matt Hardy was in the house. Brother Love Bruce Pritchard was in the house uh, as well as a surprise appearance by Shane Douglas, the uh, Pittsburgh original, the franchise himself, and of course all the great guys, guys like Generation Dead we've had on the show, uh, uh, Ryan Mitchell, Serafini, all those guys just had a, a great balls of the wall show both Thursday and Friday with a lot of great uh, new look to the promotion. Uh, so we're going to give you a little clip here, uh, exclusive of, on the video side of this uh, of uh, the beginning of that Matt Hardy, Ryan Mitchell match. We'll be right back with Remember When. In an RWA ring. I mean, he controlled that crowd and played him like a fiddle. He was like a satanic choir director. <laughs> wow. I mean, All right. Hey, I had to. Now oh, I can show, hear. Show respect between Mitchell and Hardy. These two are about to lock it up here. Oh my God. Welcome to RWA, Matt Hardy. And what a welcome he's got. These two about to lock it up here. History in the making. And here we go. Ryan Mitchell in there with a former WWE Intercontinental Champion. Former WWE United States Champion. Former WWE Tag Team Champion. Former ECW Heavyweight Champion. Former WCW Tag Team Champion. But here's former the- Ring of Honor Champion. You name it, he's held it. Former Omega Heavyweight Champion. Oh, wow, you're digging deep. These two again, back and forth. Locking up here, and Hardy again. Oh, wait a minute now. Oh, up, 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 up. And Mitchell showing the same respect, maybe? Wow. Clean break. That's surprising from Ryan. Not exactly. I mean, if you show Ryan Mitchell respect, he'll show it back to you. You just never really showed respect, so you never showed it. I'm not going to get into that. But back to this matchup, you know, nothing but respect here at all. Wait a minute, Mitchell now with the headlock. Hope he's done his homework, especially against someone like Matt Hardy, a veteran. And oh, my goodness. Hardy now snapping that arm. Oh, my goodness. Hardy. Working the arm of Mitchell here, and oh, wait a minute now. Mitchell getting out of harm's way. Do you see him using that knee up? 
Welcome back, guys. And again, you can check out uh, that RWA Aggression 6 and, of course, Road to Aggression 6 over at SorgatronMedia.com slash store, uh, available for digital download, $5.99 and $7.99, respective. Uh, so go check it out and see the, the big action this past week and two real, real good shows on Thursday and Saturday this past week. And we'll be talking about that a lot more on the Indie Mayhem show uh, later tonight if you're catching us live or on the iTunes stream uh, where we're talking to Ricky Starks, who uh, once again coming at us right off, right hot off of being on Monday Night Raw. First time going through a table from Ryback. This time, uh, Dean Ambrose gets his cup, his Awesome collector's cup to dump into uh, the uh, the uh, briefcase last week. So uh, tune into Indie Mayhem show for that and some awesome uh, some other great uh, discussion. We got all the crew piled up here uh, for this week's edition of Remember When. I am a real remember when, remembering when for every man. I am a real remember when, remember when, remember when. Okay. Okay. Thank you, LB. When it comes crashing down and you remember when. Okay. Are we still going? Oh, are we done? All right. Uh, we're good. We're good. Uh, if you haven't been able to tell by now, uh, yeah, we're, I remember when is going to be Hulk Hogan moments. Uh, <laughs> as it's in here, a real American, the life and times of Hulk Hogan. Uh, so if you got a Hulk Hogan moment, remember it. Remember it, guys. Eamon, you're the guy I have up first. You gotta, Hi. You, you gotta I have. Believe- I'm sure you have a Hulk Hogan moment from the last five years. Yeah, oh. when Hulk Hogan said silver down a bunch of times. Guess what? <laughs> I was there. Um, yeah, no. Um, yeah, uh, for those that don't know, I'm not a big Hulk Hogan fan from the uh, time that I got into wrestling because I think around the first thing I saw of Hulk Hogan was him getting murderized by Brock Lesnar, and it was goddamn amazing. Um, yeah. Um, God, I can't even. Remember when he cut that promo on Vince that one time and he couldn't stop? He was kept stumbling over his words and he accidentally called himself gay. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you remember that? I do remember that hard copy of that one. Oh, oh my god! It, oh, it was on a SmackDown. So you need to pull that up. <laughs> I need to pull that up. Okay. All right, Riz. How about you? What? What's your remember one? Um, glad you could join us. Thank you, Sword. I'm glad to oh, be he's here. got his Hulk Hogan wrestle buddy I with him. Look Hulk at that. Buddy. You're, you're prepared. I, I came prepared. It's almost like I knew this beforehand. <laughs> and I was preparing. It's almost like he read the doc. Wait, wait, Riz, you always have that on hand. That's true. That's true. Do I have to mention the uh, nice little hole in the, in the you know? Um, <clears throat> my remember one was when... Mr. America himself uh, actually took the lie detector test. What the and Hulk Hogan memories? Yeah, that was never it was proven. Mr. America. America. It, was Mr. America. Ne- it was. It was. It was always proven to be Hulk Hogan, but it was not Hulk Hogan in that mask. And but Wait, it what? was for America. Why is this a Hulk Hogan memory? Because I can make this damn. Thing. Riz, I think you just want to talk about Mr. America. Yeah. I do. Very this, You're this very Hulk- confused right now. You're not following the run sheet. These are Hulk Hogan memories. Good, that's a good point. Uh, uh, LB, LB, bring us back around while while Riz collects himself there. Uh, okay. What are, what are some- um, I <clears throat> I grew up. I grew up in the '80s, '90s. Of course, I was a Hulk Hogan <laughs> fan, but the the. Main uh, memory I have of Hulk Hogan is actually kind of a negative memory because while I was a Hulk Hogan fan, I was a much bigger Bret the Hitman Hart fan. Ooh, and yes. uh, around came WrestleMania 9. It was <laughs> oh, yeah. Bret the Hitman Hart was defending mm. the WWF Championship against Yokozuna. I was a little kid. God damn it, I was excited. I was going to yeah. watch Bret Hart finally be the Excuse me, finally be the one to take down Yokozuna. 
once and for all. And what happened? What happened? What happened? Sorg, what, what happened? happened? Shut the fuck up, Sorg, because Mr. <laughs> Fuji threw salt and breath to Hitman Hart's eyes. Goddamn bullshit. I shit my pants. I was so angry. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I got you yelled at, Sorg. And then Hulk Hogan comes out. And I think, what a nice guy. He's checking on Bret Hart. He's going to make sure that Bret's okay. He's going to help him to the back. And what does Hulk Hogan do? He gets in the motherfucking ring. <laughs> and he wrestles Yoko Zuna, who Bret Hart had already softened up, who the excellence of execution had already defeated but been screwed out of it, and Brett was like, go, go, go do it. I can't see or even know who the fuck I'm talking to. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he knew who he was talking to. Shut up all day long, Riz. I'm still angry about this. <laughs> Bret Hart didn't know what was happening. Hulk Hogan screwed Bret Hart. He screwed Yokozuna, and he screwed America. Bret Hart screwed WWF Bret Hart. Title. Wouldn't he have screwed Canada? I can't hear you over you shutting up all day long. <laughs> it was garbage, and that was the first time that I looked at Hulk Hogan and thought, you know what? Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Okay, okay. That, that was a good one. Um, okay, okay. What about you, Mad Mike? Oh, God. All right, my Hulk Hogan memory. It's not going to be from TNA. I promise. Oh. I promise. Because Hulk Hogan made no lasting memories in TNA. No. But, oh, yes, he did. No, he didn't. <laughs> but uh, my, um, I, you guys remember WrestleMania six, right? Nope. Hogan nope. vs. Warrior. Amen. But okay, for those of you who are, for those of you who aren't Fidei, remember WrestleMania six. Well, what you may not remember is the big rematch from WrestleMania Six. Oh no! Oh, God. It happened. Oh, in God. W- it happened in WCW, and oh, okay. Hollywood Hulk Hogan saw the Ultimate Warrior in oh, the no. mirror, uh, and we had the end of go versus the OWN, the One Warrior Nation. Uh, Network. Fun fact: I've, I've I've actually watched both of those matches. Um, I contend the rematch is better, just because it's more entertaining. Oh man! Wow. Okay, but but the <laughs> worst, the, the, the but a horrible the stage, a right? Match. It's a terrible match that has like ten minutes of just like fucking stalling in the beginning, and they're acting <laughs> like they fucking got hit by a car wreck, even though they're just doing Roman knuckle locks. And then Hulk Hogan gets thrown to the outside once and spends like three minutes like with doctors checking on him because he injured his leg or something. Because Hulk Hogan can't, you know, has to be protected. Wait, and which, which, wait, wait, which, which version of the match are you talking about? This is about? WrestleMania 6. Oh, really? Yeah, because the rematch was in a cage. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, uh, Max, do you have a remember when or, or is it pretty much what we were talking about before? Uh, it's pretty much what we were talking about before. <laughs> However, I would like to say that the night of WrestleMania 19, I had met Roddy Piper after after the night, and he was drunk off his ass. Wow. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, Bobby, I, I don't think we touched on you yet. No, I got oh. one. Um, uh, the WCW Dungeon of Doom, when Hulk Hogan oh, entered no. the Dungeon of Doom, <laughs> and he touched the fountain... And he's like, ah, it's not hot. <laughs> and that that just whole just angle. Was I, just I really ridiculous. hope that's just like like some amateur video video editor just like left the bad taken. <laughs> you know, like I like that's I what I that edited it. That's what I feel like when I watch that piece. Ah, it's not hot. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> oh, we we all know about you. Hogan here, Bob. <laughs> Uh, I got one. I got an actual one here. No, you had your chance. (laughs) Well, let's see. Mine Uh, would have to be the night Hulk Hogan turned his back on the Hulkamaniacs at Bash at the Beach. Yep. 
And they mentioned that. And I knew something was up when the guy came out and the mustache was basically gone. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You, you should have known then. I mean, even Heenan knew. And Heenan hates Hogan. Well, uh, Wheels, do you want to know why that mustache was basically gone? Because he had just finished filming Three Ninjas High Noon at Mega Mountain. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh-oh. You're welcome. <laughs> well, that was mine. Uh-oh. All right, Riz, you want your mulligan? I want my mulligan because it kind of goes to the, uh, the Three Ninjas High Noon thing. <laughs> uh, Mr. Nanny happened. Uh, 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 uh. Oh man! No, if you're go- if you're gonna go a Hulk Hogan movie reference, you have to either go Gremlins two or Spy Hard. Oh, oh, no oh, okay, okay, hard. okay. Can we do? Can we do just lightning round? Remember when? Don't give me a reason or anything. Tell me your favorite uh, Hulk Hogan movie. Uh, I'll go for Suburban Commando. Riz, Mister Nanny, Mike. Uh Gremlins too. Ooh, wheels. Santa with muscles. Oh, that's a good one. Amen. What he said, I can't think of. Santa with muscles. <laughs> sure, fine. Have you seen that movie? Yet? Wow. Okay. No, Bobby. I, are there any recent Hulk Hogan movies? Like, no, not really. No. Yeah, okay. uh, there was one. Bobby. There was one recent Hulk Hogan film. No, we don't talk about no, that one. No, Mike, no. one other star no, in it. No. Bobby? Uh, yeah, he was in nope. Romeo and Juliet. Oh. <laughs> B- Bobby? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say Ripper Brother. No holds barred. <laughs> LB? Behold, Thunderlips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what about you, Max? I'll go ahead and say sex tape because that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And by the way, uh, he did play... Zeus and Little Hercules. Yeah, yeah oh, we talked did. about that. He one did. Time. Also, also, uh, honorable mention for Muppets in Space. Oh, which oh, somebody yeah. somebody just purchased that in Muppets Take Manhattan for me recently. So oh, yes. yes. Um, all right, guys, let us know you're out. Oh, by the way, uh, Jen Carlin's on the Twitter says uh, she remembers meeting Hulk back home while her dad worked security. So. <laughs> There you go for the shows up there. Uh, if you have remember when hit us up at Mayhem Show or uh, check out our Facebook Wrestling Mayhem Show or Google Plus, and uh, yeah, let us know your remember when's uh, your favorite uh, Hulk Hogan or if you really want a favorite Mister America moment, you can do that too as Riz did. Yay! Uh, yay! Uh, with that, hey, we're gonna give a shout out uh, to some great guys that are supporting well, supporting pro wrestlers and supporting pro wrestling podcasts. With uh, ProWrestlingTees.com. You can go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Check out some sh- some uh, some designs uh, by the great Alex Cars, Good Times Wrestling Mayhem Show, Property of Mayhem, and of course the great Wrestling Mayhem Show logo. But while you're there, you know, start off with the Mayhem Show shop. But uh, please explore the rest of it. Check out uh, some of the other wrestler uh, t-shirts. They got, you know, great old guys that we're, we remember, all of us except for Eamon. Uh, like <laughs> I saw Jim Duggan, Scott Hall, uh, Mick Foley, um, all getting supported on their DDP yoga. But, of course, go to the wrestling wrestler t-shirt stores, and you can get Kevin Steen t-shirts while you still can, if they haven't already taken them down off of here. Uh, friends of the show, or friends of Eamon, like ACH, friends of the show, like... Uh, 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 guys, I can't remember. Thank you, Shima, Shima yeah. Zion, who's coming to town here <laughs> next week. Uh, it's Christopher Daniels, Daphne, uh, D'Lo Brown. Don't don't you want a D'Lo Brown shirt? Come Who on. Who isn't down with the Brown? Uh, Typhoon, Fred Ottman. <laughs> yes, Typhoon, Typhoon is on here. Oh my I, God, I want a Typhoon shirt. Even better, he I, has stock Shockmaster T-shirts. Wow. Don't you? I came in like a wrecking ball. Oh, my ah! God. You know you want shirt. that. There's a zombie Shockmaster <laughs> shirt. So good on him for cashing in on that. Uh, uh, I know he was at WrestleCon the year I went uh, over in New Jersey uh, as Shockmaster, I believe. Uh, Lou Fisto is in here. Uh, uh, Mason Ryan. Uh, Matt Cross, who's also going to be in, in town for IWC next week. Uh, Brodus Clay is in here. <laughs> so uh, support indie wrestlers. Uh, support pro wrestling, support support 
podcast, ProWrestlingTees.com. And again, start at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Uh, so with that, uh, hey, Mike, uh, speaking of supporting uh, the lowly, lowly uh, wrestling companies, you went to TNA this past week. <laughs> Holy hell. <laughs> Holy hell. So. And before I get into that, you may see a WMS shirt on TNA in about, you know, five weeks if they're still on TV. In, in like, about I wore my Property Mayhem shirt there, and I was near the camera. Nice. A lot. <laughs> but, um... So yeah, I went to the uh, the last TNA taping at the Hammerstein Ballroom, where we got to see uh, the and, build up to No Surrender and, and No Surrender itself. And this this was a, a, a three night st- stand they were doing, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, thanks to uh, friends of the show Lagana for hooking me up with tickets. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> simply because I responded to a tweet by EC3 of all people. Hence the uh, trouble, 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 you've been, trouble, you've been, trouble, You've trouble. been best friends with EC3 on the Twitter uh, on Thursday nights, I've noticed. Uh, he, he and I are pretty close. I mean, you know, I'm not going to say I'm probably going to be in his wedding, but I'll be at his wedding. So, what? I don't know. Um, but it was, a, it was a long, long show. It was almost five hours, sort of. Oh, wow. Nice. It was almost five hours. And I got to say... If you don't have to listen to the announcers, you don't have to watch the backstage segments, and you talk to little children about the product while Whoa. it's happening, Whoa. no, be- because Whoa. little children are impressionable. TNA is a very fun product to watch. <laughs> can, can, I, can I know the, the, um, just from the first two things that you mentioned, uh, Mike? So the, the things that are supposed to give you context about what's going on, don't pay attention to those. <laughs> I, Eamon, Eamon, because I've, I've been good with not reading TNA spoilers because they've been taping so much stuff in advance, so I've tried not to. I did not read any of the tapings that happened the previous two nights, so I was okay. curious as to how this was huh. going to work. <laughs> so, huh. yeah. So I had literally... Zero context. Like, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, there is some weird stuff that's going to happen. <laughs> some of it's going to be really, really cool. Uh, some of it I didn't like that much. But, um, <laughs> Eamon, Eamon, that H blank 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 K uh, was at my show. Mm. And I believe you're going to um, uh, be be excited about it. I, I, I sure hope so. I, hope I, be, I believe my, my I, 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 I was pretty positive I'd be excited you know, about it. I just hope they can sustain it. You know, you know the, the past few weeks have been probably one of the best TNA has done in the past few months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's all because of – and it's not in large part to anything – the announcers have done. It's actually done in the ring. Mm-hmm. Not no segments. I mean, it, not the segments. Not the announcers. Not anything. It's the performance that's in that ring, and just it's actually the, pretty good. Just the segments where female bosses get put through tables. Shut up. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know what? Um, for for all those concerned about Dixie Carter's well being, well being, and I know you are. Um. I saw her walking down Fifth Avenue, uh, so she's okay. Well, that, that happened. Like it also a, happened like two months yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she was. Okay, she fab. still, still looked good. She looked angry, but she looked fine. Oh, I'd be angry too. <laughs> I'd be angry if I was really, Southern too. It was too. really funny. Hmm? Go ahead. Oh, it was really funny uh, when I was because I was walking down to the arena to get my tickets. And I saw Dixie Carter walking up up street, uh, up to the street, and um, I stopped and did like a double take. And this other guy who was walking down the street too just stopped me. He was like, "Is that Dixie Carter?" I'm like, "I think it was." Literally, the only two people in New York City that possibly could have recognized her recognized her. <laughs> but it was it, uh, the show itself was. There's a lot of really great wrestling, and the last match I got to see was DJ Z versus Low Key. Nice. 
So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. We got, there's a lot of the menagerie. So, um, um, so, uh, I, I found myself with a quandary or maybe that may is more for the indie mayhem show, uh, because of context. So, so impacts coming to town ish on Saturday. It's one of their baseball shows. It's in Washington, no. PA, which is, it's a little bit of a drive out of, out of town, you know? Uh, I don't know. It's probably like, what up? Like a half an hour drive out of town. Those familiar. Smart. Don't you have a show? It's it's around a half hour. Yeah, that's actually um super close to where I grew up. Yeah, yeah, that's that's your neck of the woods. Should I should I go? Yes. Like I always love the, not like the taping so much. I enjoyed the taping too when I went to the one up on uh, IUP, uh, which is another holy crap drive. Um, and I always enjoyed the live shows whenever it's it came. It's not down. that bad. Not that no, bad. no. Like like, and this could be the, my last oh. chance, right? Oh, now you complain oh, about the drive. Hey, hey. When I drive an hour and a half to get to Pittsburgh, every time I go to Pittsburgh, <laughs> Bobby, get in the car. Bobby, just get in the car <laughs> and stay it, here. Get in the car. So if, if, Bobby, if I drove last... from New York to Pittsburgh for an IWC show. All That's right? true. Yeah. He got he so, kind of wins there. So. If, if, their, if their last base brawl is a base brawl show or whatever, yeah, it, it. it's a base brawl. It's out at the <laughs> uh, console energy field or whatever out there. If, so. Well, if, from what I see from their last show that they held at the baseball field, goes you should totally go. There'll be plenty of room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can stretch. I can stretch out. Okay, okay. I will. Well, maybe I'll be the one to take the sad picture. So well, Sorg, I'll tell you Sorg. what, Sorg. We'll we'll go down to Washington. We'll go to the TNA show, and then we'll make a whole nice weekend of it. We'll go down to my parents' house. We'll go for bike rides. We'll spoon a little bit, have whoa, some ice cream. Whoa, whoa, It'll be great. Whoa. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, that, that's so nice. Hmm. Hmm, that's a little weird. Uh, anyways, uh, we'll, we'll see. I actually, I'll see if I can weird? talk the lady into going down to that. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll head down. So or it's kind TNA of nice. house shows are always fun. Oh, they are. Yeah, oh, they completely, are. completely. Always, as long as, as, long as the good. weather looks like it's holding out, I'll, 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 I'll probably uh, maybe make my way down. <laughs> yeah, to that. that's the and no, really if, if you go oh, there, sure. you everybody talk to me at once. Whoa, 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 whoa! Okay. Wheels, you had something to say. Oh, I was just saying. The only thing is, it's bad because it's an outside show, so they're depending on weather to stick together. Mm-hmm. Unlike. Us who have indoor shows. <laughs> yeah, outdoor outdoor shows are definitely tough. What were you saying, Mike? Um, if you do go, try and talk to Rockstar Spud because he is phenomenal. Awesome. And I, I I would go to any show that Rockstar Spud is on. I'll give you that. He's That's delightful. That's true. Like was friends. Rockstar he was Spud be in town, staged so. a sit in during the taping I was at. He nice. staged a sit in during his match. It was fantastic. All right, uh, enough TNA for now. Let's uh, talk SummerSlam this weekend. We kind of talked a little bit about the bill. Oh, uh, shit, it is this weekend. Yeah, I know, right? This weekend, you nut job. Summer uh, fast. We talked She's about some crazy. of the Brock Lesnar, John Cena stuff. Uh, is there anything to add to that main event uh, commentary wise? It's going to be goddamn glorious. Hate C Nation. That's what. That's what you're going to add. No, uh, in all honesty, it's going to be goddamn glorious. Yeah, I'm so? being real <laughs> honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being super honest. Being a John Cena fan has worked out real good for me so far. Really? <laughs> when I, was the last time Dean Ambrose got a five minute uh promo session on Raw? Yeah, punk bitch itis. Uh, uh-huh. Whatever he said, I didn't watch. I don't um, know either. I don't uh, think I was paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, John Cena's getting a big thing. Oh, man. that's It's so nice being his fan. I don't have to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's, not, he's not actually saying anything. I'm just comforted by the knowledge that he is there. He's on the screen. Honestly, <laughs> as a kid who grew up with Bret Hart, I can honestly tell you that I have no idea what he said. All I know is best there is best there as best there ever will be. And that was it. And, that then, and, and so I'm good. in that same little. S- hey, hey, kid, you want some glasses, eh? <laughs> in, in, in turn, uh, was that Razor Ramon? What the fuck was that? <laughs> that, was, that was that, that was, was all glasses horrible, from the bad guy. <laughs> all right, all right. So let's go down the line here. What do you guys think? Um, um, I, I've been I've been reading comments that Stephanie McMahon is carrying this entire thing with Brie Bella. Uh, uh, yes. 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 
She is. Pretty pretty resounding, yes. Stephanie McMahon is the best goddamn character on that show, and that's a fucking fact. I don't care what anyone <laughs> says. She's amazing, and I I I there's no there's no topping her. Sorry. I, as Sorry. anybody noticed, as anybody noticed on Instagram, maybe they're they're probably being tweeted as well, the workout pictures of uh Stephanie McMahon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like like I there needs I'm yeah. I'm hoping they're also filming some kind oh. of montage to go into this she needs to chase a chicken like shane and vince <laughs> no she doesn't because she no no that chicken then you get stephanie mcmahon yeah. choking chicken comments and do we some, don't need do that some otherwise. angel heart shit fucking snap the chicken and drink its blood yeah whoa whoa <laughs> this shit real weird with her thighs Woody. <laughs> and of course, oh, no, you know, I, I, I agree of the two stephanie is you know the better of the two but man all that the whole thing is just disgusting yeah, it's awful. Yeah. It got I, worse this week. I yeah, got worse. <laughs> All I gotta say is Claire Lynch. Uh, I know. Don't Claire say Lynch. that name. That was Don't tough. ever say that name. Uh, of course, if in case you forgot, Roman Reigns and uh, Randy Orton. Sure, uh, I forgot. I forgot. That'd be fine. I feel hey, like Randy Orton had the best RKO. Well, the second or third best RKO. I ever feel like night. there's so many matches on SummerSlam that are at least like the second pay per view that these are like some of the feud ish things going on have gone on so long. I don't care anymore. That's um, one of them. That's uh, one of them. How are there so many that... matches on SummerSlam without a US style match? Uh, Sheamus was traveling. No, he was just on the show, wasn't he? He gets yep. a pre show. He's probably getting the pre show then. Well, there is a oh. match for America. There is a match for America. the mm-hmm. The longest, America. the longest uh, built flag match since Madison now, Square Garden in the eighties. I love it. Here's where the little. The, the, here's where um gets tricky. JBL says that it was you can win a, the flag match with a submission. Yeah. Um, what? Very yeah. complicated because someone else said that the winner gets their. Uh, yes. Their so it's theme. not a no. Their nation's flag. theme played. Yeah, yeah. their na- the nation national anthem mm-hmm. played over. So the it's, a, it's a flag match in the sense that it's an actual. It's just a regular wrestling match. Probably. Welcome, welcome to SummerSlam. There are the flags home. involved. No, no, no so, it but, says on WWE.com you have to capture your opponent's flag. Okay. Well, then what okay. the fuck is happening? So yeah, this this SummerSlam no stipulations idea. are all lame. I tend to not listen to JBL. But here's the th- why. As long as you're missing out, because he's the only good announcer. You're missing out, Michael. To be I fair, don't... I don't listen to any of them. I listen to Hangouts. In all fairness, I, 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 I I'm cool with that match as long as they don't pussyfoot with the ending like they did last time. They need to just <laughs> have a defi- even if it's Swagger winning. Like they just need to have a definitive. This guy won. You know, yeah, like. Yeah. It, it, None of that ridiculous count out bullshit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the lumberjack match between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. I was oh, excited. What? What's the point of the lumberjack match? Yeah, speaking uh, of the stipulation. So they can have a better stipulation paychecks. next pay per view, probably? It's SummerSlam, though. Money, 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 money. But not everything money. ends at SummerSlam. But this is a that. big feud that they prolong. I mean, that they. I, my theory was when they did the, um, the switch at the last pay per view where they didn't have the match. It's like, good. Don't have the match. Build it until SummerSlam to where they collide for the first time. And now they're just like, oh, and it's a lumberjack match. Like the, most throw, want, the most throwaway stipulation. But, no, but, but it makes want, sense. It makes sense to a point because they've been playing this cat and mouse game for so long. Mm-hmm. Seth Rollins can't run away. Um, D- you'll know Dean Ambrose is coming. I, I, I don't know. Cage matches are for it, though. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you, uh, matches are oh, hold on, if Bobby. you want to make it more interesting. Why don't we call it? Oh, the, why don't we say what Dean called it originally? The Wall of Flesh match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That sounds like a way different match. Yeah, that, that uh, does. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say that, and I want to say Dean Ambrose is cutting some of the best promos. He is. Yes, he is. completely. He is. What the fuck? Who is riding a motorcycle <laughs> on the show? Was that a cow? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Shut settle down, settle down, settle down, guys. That might be the airplane <laughs> outside the Columbo showing <laughs> up. <laughs> AJ Lee and Paige. Um, cool. I, I, I actually kind of like this build. Yeah. Okay. There's a oh. train now. There's someone else on the train. Who has the sound effects CD? It wheels. There's <laughs> amazing. Wow. Lakers gang outside his place. Yeah, wheels. Wheels oh, is like the 
Wheels is like at the like transportation hub down there. Apparently, Wheels is actually at Hog Wild ninety eight. Where he so is alive. I can't wait to see the way he's dressed alongside Dusty Rhodes. Um, no, in all seriousness, this, I'm, I'm a bit more excited because it's Nash. <laughs> Eamon doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> I just want to talk, like, about, talk no, about wrestling. Any the match, show. There will be no fun had on this podcast. I have to say, if any match deserves a stipulation. It's AJ Lee and Page. Really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. They've had a they good build. They can do it. They've had the best build for a Diva title match mm-hmm. in a very long time. Yes. L- loser skips town. <laughs> Bobby. Literally. Bobby. Ah, literally. Bobby, get the fuck out. Bobby, no. <laughs> no. And, I mean, I agree. It's one of those great builds because it switched Bobby. them around. It's Bobby. like Page went into face. No, Bobby. You got- Hey, Bobby, come back. Oh, AJ, Bobby, no. Paige is heel, and AJ back in the face. It's like, awesome. Because I'd rather see Paige as a heel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, AJ's the fa- not fully face, e- fully face either, too, which is fun. Because like after she lost to Eva Marie, she still beat the crap out of Eva Marie and did like mm-hmm. her weird like licking fingers as she was dry humping Eva Marie's head. It's not, it's not a, it's not a, to me, it's not a matter of heel face. It's a matter of just two wrestlers trying to get into each other's head because they want to win the match. Mm-hmm. I and, think that's what it comes down And to. honestly, if, yeah, if, if, if you get beat by Eva Marie, <laughs> you need to take your frustrations out on Eva Marie. It's you okay guys, that it's okay that, or not. that demon got her after the match and she was possessed for a while. <laughs> When was the last time we had a pay per view of two Divas matches on it? Last pay per view? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not talking pre show. I'm not uh, talking pre show. Main card. Probably. No, no, actually, a couple pay per views ago. Um, yeah, I think so. Because we had the Summer Ray Layla thing going on uh, alongside that's the right. Divas title. Summer Ray Layla and so. the title match. Um, oh, yeah, that's real right. quick. Dango Wiggle. Jericho yeah. Bray Wyatt. That's going to be yeah, good. That's going to be good. Yeah. That's gonna be good. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be good. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's some noises happening there. Max, 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 you, Max, you got Janice, something to say, I right? I watched last night, and but, I, heard, I heard last night was really good with the sit-down. Hold on, hold on. I Ma- didn't watch last night. Max has got has, has something to say here. <laughs> how, how can you say... Okay, so I've been a big proponent of Bray Wyatt and Chris Jericho since their NXT match. However, that, that mm-hmm. match at Battleground was terrible. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. It's like, they don't have chemistry. At least not on the big stage. So while I, I hope that this is the match that can bring it back, I don't have faith that Jericho can pull that. Uh, not not pull, but I don't think that they have have the structure there for for a good chemistry back and forth match. Okay. And this would be a, honestly, this would be a perfectly fine match. Like it's not going to blow anyone away, but I think it, it, it's a perfectly fine feud. The problem is it's coming off of the John Cena Bray Wyatt feud that I feel really damaged Bray Wyatt as a character. Yeah. Just because he did not like the whole the whole that whole storyline to me ruined Bray Wyatt for me. I, I just can't get into it. He cut some interesting promos, but they never lead anywhere, hmm. and it's it's really depressing. So you're so, tired of the myster- mysterious mystery that is the Bray Wyatt promo? I am because there's no like it's mystery to the point of there's no pr- he doesn't have a purpose. He hasn't because, accomplished anything. Okay. Okay. But, but, but that was because I've been saying from the beginning that you can't have a cult leader character without a cult. You've got to recruit somebody. You have to show that he's being effective uh, with his mind games. You know. And the whole story. I, the whole story, at least from my take from the Cena thing, was it wasn't a matter of winning matches. So now he's concerned about. Now he's wrestling like a regular sort of storyline where it's going to lead to a match that he wants to win. It doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. The, the no. it they needed it was a good concept, but they just didn't know how to follow through on it. And they should have just it would if they had just pulled the trigger at some point during the Cena thing, where Bray Wyatt to me, I think I I, I enjoyed the WrestleMania match. I think the WrestleMania match was good, even with Cena going over. But it, they still tried to sell the fact that Cena was affected by having to wrestle Bray Wyatt, mm-hmm. and then the cage match just fucking ruined it. And then the fucking last man standing match was just more of the same. And and I don't feel, I just don't feel like this Jericho thing is going to do anything for Bray. It's just going to pull him further into that. You're just another one of these guys. Right. I mean, it's just, the thing about the Bray Wyatt character is they kind of want him to be like a backwoods undertaker with cryptic promos, with mind games, all things like that. The only difference is the undertaker won feuds. 
He won a lot of them. Like he had. So, so what you're saying is they want him to be like Kane. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, but Kane won feuds too. That's nah. true, but not very much. The the gimmick for Kane now is that he's big and he's imposing, and you're afraid of him. He never wins matches, but for some reason, yeah. still afraid of him. Kind of like also, the big show also, problem. I would contend for the first couple years of Kane, he never really won. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I I think I think instead of elevating Bray Wyatt, it's actually going to bring down Chris Jericho. Yeah. Ooh. I'm I'm so over the I'm into Chris Jericho thing. Well, Jericho's on return number seven. I was Jericho's over. kind of suffering from the "I'm here to make a bunch of other people look good," like kind of the RVD thing. Yeah. So you're like, I'm not going to believe that Jericho's going to come back and do something good. Well, you know? and it didn't Jericho work. is only coming back now to work with people he wants to work with. That's true too. Hashtag mm-hmm. Podcast One. <laughs> 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 but it did it. For example, when he came back to put Fandango over, and I know, I think oh, I'm pretty Jesus. sure from what I heard. Well, from what I heard, he didn't really it was into it. But the thing of putting someone over isn't giving them a win. If Bray Wyatt wins at SummerSlam, it's not like that's putting him over in a sense. You Especially to- because Jericho's out on in September. He's leaving. Yeah. It doesn't make any know. sense. I want to see who yeah. Sister Abigail is. Well, no one knows who Sister Abigail is because apparently it was... Daphne. It was... Ooh, yeah. It should have been Paige. Uh, that could have been fun. That could have been fun. Um, and of course, we do get an Intercontinental Championship match with uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler and The Miz. Sleeper. That's going to be good. Maybe sleeper? sleeper? Could be. Fine. Maybe. Is it really a sleeper if you know it's going to be good? <laughs> yeah, I am sure it's going to be fine. It's Miz, so you never know. It could be really bad, but the last gonna, time they had a match, it was really point. good. Yeah. The last time they had a match on Raw was really good. So was that that Ohio match that they did with the stupid? Oh yeah, the, yeah. The Ohio the music Ohio. thing. No, no, it was uh, right after Battleground. Okay, they had a non-title. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is that is a weapons match. <laughs> I think I think Ziggler and Miz is is, is probably going to be a match of the night. Yeah, I wow. agree. In, in, in ring. Uh, followed by, of course, Lesnar versus Cena as uh, as like entertainment value. Awesome. I, I think it's going to be well entertainment value, but I, I don't think. I mean, it's not a matter of it's not going to be a wrestling match. It's going to be if they if they do it the way I think they need to do it, it's going to be a fucking you know fight. Like it's going to be like a fucking brawl. The like only their, thing like I worry about like, like Extreme Rules, and it's going to be amazing. But the only I, thing I worry about with uh, Lesnar Cena, it's not no DQ. Yeah, they can work with it. Ooh, I, I, I they can still, if they can still make it, the thing is, they have to have a sense of urgency. It's not even a matter of them if they go through like the whole like, you know, ring introductions. Like I'm gonna, and they do like chain wrestling and or whatever, you know, like the basic sort of setup for a wrestling match. It just needs to be guns blazing from the beginning. They can have, a, they can make it feel like a fight without them using chairs or or whatever. Like it's. I, I think I'm confident in it, um, and I think that I've been. I was not expecting to be pumped for this match. The two or three months before it was theorized that it was going to happen. Now I am fucking excited because Paul Heyman has made me excited, and Brock Lesnar talking about oh, blood and urine and vomit has made me excited. Um, God, that- I I really want Brock to win. I really want Brock to win, and that- I. Or go ahead. Oh, so I just want to say that that promo that he cut last night. Good lord, that was good stuff. <laughs> Holy crap! Go ahead. Sorry. There's, I can't remember where it's from, but somebody interviewed Paul Heyman recently, and they talked about the whole, you know, Brock. If Brock Lesnar were to become champion, because he's not part, he's not full time, and Lesnar, or Paul, basically contended that's not necessarily a bad thing. It can give the championship a lot of meaning, honestly. Like it can, it can really elevate that title. I think Brock could do a lot with that championship. Well, to plus, I mean, it's very old school too. Like back in the eighties and nineties, your champion was not on every show. Mm-hmm. The only, mm-hmm. the only reason that that started to happen was twofold. WCW was giving away non-title matches and title matches every week on Nitro, and the rest of the Attitude Era. So you had to have things like. Mick Foley winning the championship on a Raw. Like, Austin winning the championship back from Kane on a Raw. Like, 
it was the Monday Night War that really forced the champion to be on every single week. Because even in the early 90s on Raw, the champion was not on all the time. And if they were, sometimes it was like a via satellite interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, but that's the thing. I think that I just love the character of Lesnar, of being, basically of being, I wrestle like like I'm in UFC. And I'm not talking about the style he wrestles in. I'm talking about, I, you have to, I want a big fight. I'm not just going to wrestle whoever. Mm-hmm. Like, He's I, Mr. Want I love things up and put them down. I love things up. And, and it really just validates this match, I think, because it gives meaning to the championship. It really gives me a Paul but, Heyman because, one, he wants a championship in a big match. And just the whole idea of, of money being involved, like going back to the old school days of, like, you know, when you were a champion, you get, you know, a certain pay bonus or whatever. Like, I, I just love that concept. And I think it's, I, I just, I'm just honestly really pumped for this main event. Uh, can, can, can I ask a serious question? Mm-hmm. If, if Cena wins, <laughs> if Cena wins, what does that mean for Lesnar and, and even, even more for Heyman and for Taker? Lesnar's coming off of the biggest win of his career and and probably one of the biggest wins of WWE history. Mm-hmm. Losing to John Cena would would feel like Cena taking the streak. I he wins it by proxy. I can't I can't say specifically because I, I can't say like sort of point blankly if Cena wins, this will happen because it I think they could they could have Cena win in a way that would protect Brock. And I'm not talking like count out, whatever. I'm saying they could make it still make Brock come off as a badass, even though he wasn't able to capture, you know, and, and conquer uh, John Cena or whatever. So I don't think I can, I don't think it's, it's black and white like that. Um, but I do think based off of like you said, him coming off of the biggest win ever, really like I, 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 Think they just need to pull the trigger. They need to be brave and just go in, all, go all in, and, and give the championship to Lesnar. They need to do it. All right, I, all right. I think if Cena wins, you're going to see WWE Network subscribers drop. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. I doubt it. Because no, I, you still have that no, wild card, and they're they're numb to it at this point. Yeah. No, but I I really because right after SummerSlam is the renewal point for everyone who jumped on on day one. I don't and think that's if, But you think of the people that bought the network on day one. It's the internet fans. It's the people that hate John Cena. It's the people that want to see Brock Lesnar. Hmm. I think I think if you Does have anybody SummerSlam, really want to see Brock Lesnar though? I, yeah. I just I just lunchbox, I just gushed over him for a good like ten minutes. <laughs> I'm like there's like a puddle beneath me right now. Yeah, but <laughs> I feel like you're gushing over Brock Lesnar, not because of Brock Lesnar. No, yeah. no, you're absolutely. gushing over Brock Lesnar because he's not John Cena. No, no, and no, no, because, no, 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 And because he's got Paul Heyman. I disagree. Hey. No, that's not true. Heyman turned into a fruit snack. I love the Hold on, hold on, guys. Okay, on that point, we do need to wrap it up, guys. <laughs> Please let me know. This just keeps going. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll use me, it in my one I learned. Let me know what you learned from wrestling this week. Amen. I learned that I love Brock Lesnar, and here's why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love him because he's, I believe him. Okay. I believe that he is a meathead fucking shoot fighter, you know, that just wants to murder people. I hate when people talk about how, oh, Lesnar's shit because he doesn't have mic skills. There's a, that's the point. He's doesn't not supposed him. to have mic yep. skills. He's a fucking meathead. He's a street shark. If he needs to say something complicated, <laughs> that's where Paul Heyman comes in. But if he just wants to say that he's going to leave John Cena in a pool of blood and urine and vomit, he can fucking do that. And it's amazing every time lots, he does. Lots of puddles on the show. LB, what yeah. about you? What'd you learn? Uh, I learned that uh, we are creatures of habit. But try not to be, quote, stuck in your ways. Embrace the unfamiliar. You never know. How it may affect your life. And I learned that from at John Cena. You can follow him on Twitter. <laughs> at John Cena. Rise above hate. Cena. Champ is here. Hashtag well, champ is here. What about you, Bobby? I learned that uh, Bray Wyatt has the cosmic key and Cody and, and, and Stardust or Star, Stardust and Goldust need to, to look in his backyard. for. It. What about you, Max? What did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that if you win a match and then roll out from the ring uh, and then 
the camera cuts to you two minutes later, you need to sell an injury that didn't happen. This de de demonic possession. Something like that. What about you, Wheels? What did I what have I learned? I've learned that change is good and that I love you. Oh, oh. oh check his Facebook for why. Uh yeah. man, Mike, how about you? I learned so much this week. I learned you can never have enough Paul Heyman. I learned um big things are going to happen with Sonata. And I learned that oh my god, I still don't know if Jeff Hardy is alive after that last taping. <laughs> well at least it wasn't Matt, uh, because we <laughs> needed him Saturday. What about you, Zach? <laughs> Riz? Who the hell's Zach? <laughs> I'm sorry, I read your hangout. Uh Zach. I learned I learned so much things about Virgil oh, no. <laughs> that I do not want to know. Sorry, Rose. Hey, we did a good job. Especially the size of his penis. You know, wow. if, if you want more on that, go to the Wrestling Ma'am Show Facebook group. Uh, Joe Dombrowski, we shared a post over there from Joe Dombrowski, who was the f unfortunate vendor right next to him, as I was one year. Uh, hey. And he put a hey, list you want together. Some Virgil facts? List we, we together. We're going to with Virgil okay. facts. Hashtag Virgil facts. Hashtag he had Virgil facts. seven. He had a seven million dollar contract with WCW. Hashtag Virgil facts. We did a good job avoiding <laughs> that penis on Saturday. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> once measured Daniel Bryan. <laughs> That's my favorite. I think. I wow. learned. I don't uh, know how that happened. I learned that uh, uh, Shane Douglas is immune to any uh, uh, rules of indie wrestling, and he will find the one person who snuck a beer in. There you go. Uh, so with that, guys, hey, Wrestling Man Show, Z uh, Max, tell me, uh, tell them all the things they should definitely check out with you. Check out uh, thewrestlinggame.com, uh, facebook.com backslash uh, thewrestlinggame, and follow me on Twitter. I live tweet every wrestling show that's WWE. That's right. Because uh, fuck TNA. Uh, <laughs> at, at, at Russell's subtitle. That's right. We, we have pretty good back and forth uh, now and again with that Mayhem show as well. So, uh, and also, hey, Papa Lunchbox, you got something to plug too. I do, I do, I do. You may have heard on uh, lots of places that I have a new podcast. It's called Panel Riot. You can find us uh, at panelriot.com. Follow us on Twitter at Panel Riot. Find us on iTunes. Find us on Stitcher. We are everywhere uh new episode tomorrow so you get it along with your wrestling mayhem show and your awesome cast and your indie mayhem show all the good stuff boss battle it all comes out i was also on boss battle this week um it's all it's gonna come fun. out on the same day happy new comic book day uh happy batman day happy batman hashtag happy batman day this week's guest you're not going to believe who it is. Yes, you will. It's Sorgatron. Sorgatron joins us to talk about <laughs> the ultimate line, <laughs> the ultimate line of Marvel comics. It's a great conversation. It's a lot of fun. Uh, join us, panelriot.com. Thank you very much. Panel awesome. Riot is also great to listen to uh, when you're enjoying a nice glass of wine. Mm. Yeah, and drink it fast because we're kind of a short show. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's under an hour. It's under an hour. And of course, you can check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, as well as uh, on Facebook, on Google, Plus, on at Mayhem Show, on the Twitter, and the great Facebook group, like we said, at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, also, thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR for helping with notes and tweets all night long. Make sure you're subscribed to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, or YouTube, as well as the iHeartRadio app. Uh, drop us a line at Good Times. Bad. Right? That's right. Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com or four one two two zero six WMS zero. Check out Basic Sickness, Basic Sickness, sickness dot com with that sweet music from Pittsburgh. And uh, join us here live. Tuesdays live.sorgatronmedia.com at about 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join us in the chat room and uh, become a friend. Uh, so, with that, thanks everybody. Thanks, Max, for joining us and the entire crew. Mayhem out. <laughs>